G'day, Steve here, Woodworking Masterclass. We sharpened the chisels, now we're ready to mark out and cut some mortises for the plate rack. So welcome to part B of part three of the plate rack project. That's hard to say with a mouthful of marbles too. I've got a bit of timber here that I've already marked the mortises out on and there are several ways you can mark mortises. One way is a mortise gauge and you'll notice here it's got two points. One which is adjustable by a little knob on the end of a screw thread. If you want to use one what you do is get your chisel and you set it up so the two points are exactly the width of your chisel and then you use this block here like a normal gauge and you set it to whatever width you want and then put it on your job and mark it. And in theory, you should then get two lines. Another way is you can work out how far away from the edge you want the tenon to be and then you mark a line down there Get the chisel you're going to be using, have the bevel facing away from you, set it up so it's at 90 degrees to that line you just marked with the gauge, give it a tap, that will then give you the width that your chisel is and then reset the marking gauge to go to the outside edge of where that chisel blade marked. Set it, tighten it up and rescore it. Failing that, you can work out the width of the timber, say it's four inches, you want a half inch mortise to go in there. Then you measure half of four or calculate, half of four is two minus half of the mortise which is a quarter of an inch. So that leaves you one and three quarter inches set. Whoops, that's not a marking gauge. <laughs> you idiot. Then, then set your marking gauge at one and three quarter inches and mark from both sides. Now, providing your stock's straight and parallel, Hey, woodworking, it's individual. Whatever works for you, you find out what suits you best and if you're comfortable with it and more importantly, you get the results you want, hey, stick with it. All right, so I've marked out some mortises here and I've actually transferred them onto the other side because I want these as through mortises. And I'll show you three different ways. One way I used to use all the time, one way which the books say is the best way and then the way I prefer to do and you can develop on those you can use one of those or you can work your own ideas out now if you don't have one of these awesome h and t gordon tail vices you can just get a clamp put a bit of packing underneath here so you don't bruise the surface and clamp it in place like that and it's going to work fine and it won't move now first off i'll use a mortise chisel. Now this is different to the bevel edge. This is a bevel edged and this is a mortise and if I turn them side on you can see the mortise chisel is a lot heavier construction. So I've marked it out and I've put a knife line around it. Now I start in the middle and I'll do one cut with the hollow grind pointing away from me like so and then I'll do one the other way with the hollow grind 
pointing in that direction. And then I'll go about oh, a millimetre between cuts. And each time you'll find the chisel will go down deeper. And then you can just lever it out. And then go back and go the other way. Now when I come up to these end lines, turn it around so you've got the back of the chisel facing that finish line. And come in about, what's that, an eighth, a mil, mil and a half, and give it a bit of a knock, and then come right onto that line, into that knife cut. Make sure the chisel is straight up and down and give it a clout. Come back the other end, same thing. About an eighth from the end and then come into that knife cut, give it a thump. Now I'll turn it over, knock the loose bits out, start in the middle, back of the chisel facing to my left, turn it around, oh, I have about one or two mil between the two cuts, so it looks a little bit like that, and then just proceed as before. Whatever direction you're going in, make sure the curved part of the chisel is facing in that direction. And then lever with the back of the chisel and that'll clear the waste. And again, when I come up to these lines, I'm about a millimetre off it, back facing the cut line, and now I'm going right on the line. And chop straight down. Grab a smaller chisel just to clean out the waste. Come nearly through. So now it's just a question of cleaning the rest of that waste out. It needs to be just cleaned up a little bit on these on the inside. Okay, so that's one way using a firmer chisel. There's another way and it's with using a drill. Now you'll find some advice out there that says use the drill size the same size as the mortise you want. So if you want a three quarter inch mortise, use a three quarter inch drill bit. Three eighth, use a three eighth. Personally, I like to give myself a little bit of a safety margin. So if I've got a three eighth mortise I want to cut, I'll use a quarter inch bit. That way I can clean the sides up rather than if I'm not quite as accurate with my drilling, I'm not making the mortise any wider than I want it to be. And it's a question just drilling through. And as you can see with this method, I've reduced a lot of the timber that I have to take out. Now I actually used this when I was making the mallet a few videos ago, because that was a big mortise to be cut. But on a thinner piece like this, I really don't like it. The reason being, you can actually see there, okay, I know I did this by hand, but I ran very close to going over my line on this one here. But that said, it's a method I used to use for ages. And much the same, cutting it out the way you did before. And I'll show you a reason that I don't like this method, once I developed another method, is I'm cutting material here and I've got a hole here. And what can happen is when I'm cutting, my chisel goes into empty space, and I felt it do it then, I don't know if you could see that, but it, it can turn and it can spin. And in doing that, I can actually gouge bits of timber out from the side wall of the mortars here. There's a prime example there, it's twisted. It's actually twisted clockwise as I was chopping. Same thing when you come up to the end, Move the back of the chisel 
about a millimeter, half a millimeter from the end line. Give it a tap, then put it right into the knife mark. Hold it perpendicular. Give it a chop down. Same up this end. Turn it over. Also, what I'm finding even while I'm doing this, with those holes there, the chisel just wants to go into empty space, which means you actually lose control. And again, this one needs a bit of cleaning up on the side walls. We get there eventually. But here's the one I now prefer to use. And I think it's the quickest, the simplest, and for me the most accurate, and requires far less cleaning up. Now, I've marked around here with a knife, as I did with these other two. But what I do differently, and I don't know if it's because my eyes aren't what they used to be, but I find it's much easier for me if I actually just come in and just take little chips out, both ends, and along the top. What it does for me is gives me a little bit of a recess that I can then put my chisel into. Because even with just marking lines, I find sometimes I tend to go a little bit over the line or if I twist, whereas I guess you could say it's a little housing for the chisel. And then I know exactly where those chisel marks have to be because I've already marked it out by recessing a little bit. Same thing, hit that way, hit that way, and we just walk down the line. The chisel around, come back the other way. Scoop it out. Now I'll come up to these end bits. That one's a bit close. Turn it around so the back of the chisel's in my cut mark. A couple of hits. Turn up to this end. Turn it over. Knock out any waste. And again, I'll take a little cut out of there. Cut out of there. there we go. And there we have it, and very, very little cleaning up needed. Now there's one other that I have to do in this plate rack and it's slightly different because it's wider than it is long. So theory would say, oh well in that case I cut it this way, but no, you've still got to cut it the same way because if you cut it this way and you're pulling out, what you're actually doing is pulling all these fibres and you won't get a nice clean edge. It looks a little bit more complicated but it's really not. So I'll show you how to do that one. Now that one's seven eighths. I've knifed around where I want it to be. So I'll just clean, give myself a little bit of reference point there. And exactly the same. Start in the middle, give it a hit, turn it around, give it a hit. Now just continue doing it. Turn it over. And hopefully, a couple of hits will be through on the other side. There we go. And that's the one that I'll be using in the plate rack. Now I've worked out how to cut these mortises. This is Steve pulling the shed door down. 
on part B of part three of the Plate Rack Project. And I look forward to having your company in the shed soon when I cover how to cut tenons. In the meantime, if you like what we do, please go to woodworkingmasterclass.com.au and become a supporter. And click on the Patreon button or the Buy Bob a Bone button and there you'll see a list of great rewards that our supporters have opportunities to be involved with. More videos that don't make it to YouTube and a lot of behind the scenes stuff as well. Or while you're there at woodworkingmasterclass.com, join up the e-workshop and keep abreast of what's coming up. So until we meet again, remember to keep it sharp, but more importantly, keep it safe, be nice to each other, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now. Anyway, I've marked it out, so now I start in the... <laughs>